What's going on YouTube? GS right here. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to recover data from an iPhone, iPad or iPod Touch running iOS 12 or iOS 11 or even iOS 10 and lower and we're going to do that with a program called Tenorshare Alt Data. Now, this video is sponsored by Tenorshare and we're going to present the program and how it works. You can actually do more than simply recovering data with their software. Their software allows you to pretty much browse backups that have already been created or even iCloud backups and also repair system if it's broken. For example, if your device is stuck in recovery mode or if it's stuck on the Apple logo and it's no longer booting and so on. But do keep in mind that the repair operating system option will fix the problem in most of the cases Says, but it will update the device to the latest version and in the advanced mode it may even remove your data. So if you are wanted jailbreak, do not use this and do not attempt to fix it with this method because it will update to the latest version. Anyways, what we're interested in in this video is the recover from iOS option and the recover from iTunes backup file. This allows you to pretty much open a backup and browse the contents of it. This is something that iTunes doesn't let you do. You can make a backup with iTunes and you can actually restore a backup with iTunes to the phone or the tablet, but it won't let you browse the contents of the backup to see which photos you have in there, to see which contacts you have in there or which notes you have in there and so on. And of course iTunes wouldn't let you select which photos you want from the backup and to transfer them to the computer and so on. iTunes only lets you make a backup and restore a backup to the phone. Now this program is a little bit different. This one allows you to browse a file and all its contents so you can browse your old backups and new backups and so on and get your files from there to put them in a computer or from the computer to the device without having to restore the entire backup. Now this is just one function of it. The recover from iOS would pretty much attempt to make a backup directly from the iOS device that is connected. In my case it's an iPod Touch 6 generation, the latest iPod and it can save a bunch of information from it. Now of course the process is highly limited by the iOS restrictions but it can save most of the things you would want to be saved. So we're talking here about the messages and their attachments, we're talking about photos, calendar, kick and attachments, contacts, app photos, reminders, uh, call history, FaceTime history, uh, app videos, Safari browsing history and so on and the videos, iBook and photo videos, music and stuff like that and even WhatsApp attachments of all things. So you can do that. Now if you want to get the program it is available as a free trial for both Windows and Mac and there is also a paid version available which has more features. So with that being said let's test their program and see why it's worth checking out. So the program itself as I said does also some iOS data recovery but of course that's limited to the iOS itself and file management which is something good. At first I'm going to show you how it works with a backup that already exists on the computer. So you can see that I have two backups in here for this iPod. You can see the serial number of the device and the backup size and you can also delete them if you want to and one of them has a padlock icon in there. This means that this backup is actually protected by a password. When you make an iTunes backup you also have the option to password protect it and um, this program in here can deal with that as well. So if you have a backup that has a password and you try to scan it, it will ask you for the backup password of course which is something good because it can deal with that. So if I input my password in this case it's 1234 because this backup has been made just for demonstration purposes. I press decrypt and it will decrypt the uh, content of the backup without having to rely on iTunes and so on. Which by the way iTunes would not decrypt your backup unless you want to restore it to the phone. So if you want to recover data from a backup that's been password protected, iTunes would definitely not help you in that case and the backup will stay pretty much encrypted. This program does handle that. So as you can see it starts scanning the contents of the backup, it finds the calendar, it finds the photos and so on. Now I do not have files in all these categories but you can see on the left the categories it supports. So after the scanning is complete you can go ahead and look for the photos. The one with red have been deleted or are going to be deleted and the ones that do not have the red writing in there are still available on the phone and are not on the brink of being deleted. Then you have the notes. You can recover the notes in here. So you can see that these are the notes that have been deleted and they are with red and I can recover them in here and the ones with black are pretty much already on the phone and can still be used. So I can recover all of them and these also contain the graphics. So this is a picture of a cat that I drew and as you can see it's been pretty much recovered in here as well. So what I liked about this program is that it can handle 
uh, most aspects of the nodes, like the metadata of the node, the date when it's been created, the time, the photos inside it, which is actually good. The next thing is a note attachment. So if you're only interested in the photos from your notes, you can definitely get them. This is the picture of the cat and I can recover it if I want to. I can simply press in here and recover. And as you can see, I have recovered it, note attachments, and this is the uh, photo. I can put it everywhere I want. Now, the next thing is the Safari. This is actually very, very good. You can recover lost or deleted parts of the history. So if I want to check what's been deleted from a history, I can still do that. And then I can see the actual content of the history. You can see everything I have searched on that device. Let me press the X in here and the weather and the um, Microsoft Developer Portal, some macOS internals, my blog, and various parts in here. But yeah, you can definitely recover the entire history. Then you have the calendar, which does contain every event you have in there. And of course, the reminders. Now, on the reminders, it's actually very powerful. It gets the title or the content of the reminder, also the list it belongs to, the status, whether it's been completed or incompleted, and so on. You can see I have some completed ones the date and time, the location, if any, the priority, again, if any, and then the notes. And you can see that here on the notes, those that have links also have the link in there. So this is actually quite good. And again, I can save them in various formats, including XLS, text, XML, or HTML, which is quite good. Now, I can also select everything and, of course, recover everything that is possible from the backup, but I can also recover individual things. For example, if I want to get this particular photo with this microchip in here and not anything else, I press recover and there you go. I go to camera roll and I have the photo in there and I can open it and it will be available on my computer. So as you can see, it's very easy to just get individual parts of a backup on the computer and I can definitely put the files back on the phone if I want to without having to restore the full backup and of course compromising my data that already exists on the device. Now voice memos are actually recovered as well. For example, I have this one called Cat. It's gonna play in QuickTime by the way, so I will have to recover it first and then I will have to open it. So voice memos and this one. Remind me to take the cat from the vet and to buy her food supplies. Oh, and also to clear the litter box. So as you can see, I'm able to pretty much um, recover the data, including voice memos, which is actually good because most of the times I would do voice memos, but they are part of backups. And when I want to recover them and listen to them, they are encrypted or they're part of the backup, which doesn't make any sense because the backup itself is just a bunch of files that do not make any sense. So you wouldn't just be able to browse the contents of the folder because it doesn't make any sense. You need a specialized program to open the backup. Now the app photos pretty much contains the uh, photos from various applications. In this case, it's just the notes. And then you have the WhatsApp things, the uh, Tango, the Viber, uh, Line, WeChat and Messenger, but I do not have any contents regarding to that. So there is nothing in here. But you can do the same thing from the phone if you want to. You just select everything that can be recovered from the phone and press start scan. And with the phone connected, you will pretty much be able to analyze the contents of the uh, of the phone, including all the photos, all the calendars, the reminders, the voice memos, and so on. And as I said, in order to do that, the program pretty much creates a backup, a temporary backup of the data that is currently on the phone. And after that, it scans the uh, copy and of course, it will list the entire content. So I have the photos already in here. I have the calendars and reminders already in here. So that's how you do it. And of course, that's how you recover it. If you want, you can also recover them from iCloud if you have backups in iCloud. But unfortunately, I do not have any. But the process is definitely similar. Now, this is pretty much it about this program, guys. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this software. Give it a try. There is a free trial available so you don't lose anything. And of course, tell me in the comment section down below what you think about it. Till the next time, I'm Geosnow. Peace out.